The ITV today announced that in order to save this annual money spinner, uh, they're not going to be able to go to Australia for obvious reasons. Coronavirus crisis, uh, you know, they know they don't know what's going to be happening in Australia in the months to come. The show's supposed to happen in November. So in order to save the show, the show must go on, as they say in showbiz, uh, they're going to take it to Wales to a rain-sodden castle. So instead of the rainforest in Australia, it's going to be in a rain-sodden castle in Wales. I wonder if that will work uh now i want to talk now to uh she's too modest to accept this but uh let me tell you the lady that's coming up on the show is the greatest i'm a celebrity contestant of all time she was in the 15th series a couple of years back and here she is the one and only lady c lady colin campbell hello lady c <laughs> I love you, my dear. I love you. Thank well, you, you for that compliment. I mean it. I mean it. That was, uh, you know, I because I used to be a TV critic, so I used to watch this show every year. I had to watch every second. It wasn't always a pleasure. Some of the years, it was an absolute dirge. Your year, uh, I was entertained from start to finish. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so there you are uh, in the Australian jungle, which to my way of thinking was an important part of the format. Uh, now they're going to stage the show at a rain-sodden castle in Wales. You know something about castles. You kind of live in one, don't you? What do you think of ITV's plan to take it to Wales? Will it work? Well, I have to tell you, I think it's going to add a level of torment <laughs> that is going to make it unbearable for the people who are <laughs> participating in the show. Because, you see, at least when we were in the Australian jungle, it was nice and warm. And and all, it, ra it rained occasionally, although it was a rainforest, yep. but it didn't rain that often. I mean, it wasn't like England or Wales or Scotland in winter. So I think it's going to be absolute hell on earth for yeah. the people. Do you know what? I've forgotten that. Of course, it's going to be in November, isn't it? Uh, so it's going to be freezing as well as probably mm. very wet. Mm. And uh, yeah. I, so, so when you were in the jungle, as you say, the, at least the warmth, the clement weather uh, kind of helped you get through that ordeal. Uh, so these people in freezing conditions, in the pouring rain, in some old falling down castle in Wales, are going to starve, hate each other. It's going to be hell for them, isn't it? It's going to be a whole other level of torment. I tell you, a sadist couldn't have come up with a better <laughs> scenario. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Well, um, so part of the, uh, the, the, the what do they call them, the bush tucker trials and the and all that, they, you, they, a lot of these creatures that they use to put on people's heads, and they're very much sort of tropical forest insects and tropical forest uh, creatures. Uh, they're not going to have those in Wales, are they? What do you think they're going to put on their heads, like spiders or something? Well, I've got news for you. All of those things are created by the production team because they have to be sterile and they can't have germs and all the rest of it. So the rats and the spiders and the cockroaches, they are all bred mm. by the team. I mean, I, you know, it's a wonderfully sophisticated, very slick operation. There are 600 people per diem on site doing the whole thing. So I think they will be able to come up with all sorts of other, you know, whether it's rats or cockroaches, they'll be able to come up with with stuff like that. But it's going, it's it's going. I think it's going to make it really much more uncomfortable. And what to me is interesting is how the heck are they going to get all those towers that are maybe a hundred feet? They're going to have to build them all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, in England, we have things like English heritage, uh, saying you can't do X, you can't do Y. It's going to be really interesting to see how they get around the restrictions as well. But it's, I, I would imagine that they are going to throw a whole load of money at it, and they will succeed. 
you know, who knows? Maybe maybe this will be the format for the future. Well, do you know and what, Lady C? That's a really interesting point because while we uh, have our doubts about whether or not the Welsh production will work, if it does uh, and uh, it's a hit and they get big audiences, ITV are going to go, tell you what, let's not waste our money going to Australia again. So we may be faced with the very grim prospect of I'm a celebrity king of the castle in Wales forevermore. Yes, well, as long as they don't try to make me the queen of their castle, I'm fine. I'm happy being the queen of my own castle. Thank you very much. Yeah. How much <laughs> How much would they have to uh, pay you to go down to Wales? Because I wouldn't mind betting they might not knock on your door. Well, if they wanted Castle Goring, I am offering it for 200000 per per week. There you go. And, and not... I'll give them a real bargain. Yeah. <laughs> so you, what do you call it when you, when you went on the show in the, the last time uh, you got your nice fat fee, but that was to help you uh, renovate your Castle Goring Castle down in uh, Sussex, isn't it? Uh, yes, and... and I called it Whoring for yeah, Goring. That's it, Whoring oh, for Goring. <laughs> It's after nine o'clock. I'm allowed to say that, am I not? Oh, yeah, no, you, you certainly can. Would you, uh, if they wanted you to be a contestant in Wales, as I say, I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, presumably, you want a lot of money. Well, of course, darling, of course. <laughs> a girl needs to be rewarded for her endeavours, don't you think? <laughs> oh, very much so. It's always been my policy. I've always found that, actually. Um <laughs> So yes, uh, you might uh, you might consider it though if the, if the price was right. Absolutely, I'm always open to any suggestion as long as the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> You're my kind of girl. Uh, <laughs> what uh, do you watch much telly, uh, Lady C? No, I don't actually. I'm so busy between writing my books and running the castle and my social life. I look at very little television. I'm afraid. Oh. Uh, what I do look at, I always look at at catch up at one o'clock in the morning. Okay, and what have you seen recently? Well, I haven't seen anything recently. <laughs> you haven't been catching sure up with anything, you know, have you? No, no. <laughs> How's the castle coming on? Because I remember, uh, was it a reality series you did about it? But I remember seeing it on the telly a lot, and it looked like it had a lot of work to be done. How's it going at Goring Castle? Well, all the work has been done. It's completely done. We've been having weddings and events. Of course, we're not allowed to have anything yeah. at the moment, so that's caused a huge problem for us. But, you no, know, everything is fine. I mean, you couldn't have chosen a better place to have lockdown than Castle Goring. You know, it's set in its own park. It's beautiful. And, I mean, it's been absolute heaven on earth, I've got to tell you. My... Uh, my son, Misha, has been here with me. I had a young friend from Croatia who got trapped in at, a, at our house in London. It's worst places to get trapped, I suppose. Well, it's, but they were both down here once lockdown started, mm. and he left last week. My son, Misha, is still here. And no, it's, 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 it's been wonderful. I've had, I have to tell you, I absolutely just thank God that I had lockdown here instead of in London. Yeah, well, I'm glad you had a great lockdown. And certainly uh, from what I remember of uh, Goring Castle, it does look like a lovely place to spend the lockdown. Um, can I just take you back to you? You and I chatted about your uh, new book uh, about Meghan Markle the other week, uh, oh. Meghan and Harry. <laughs> now, you, 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 I, I want to chastise you because you didn't, uh, you, you should have told me that Lady Macbeth line. You said that Meghan is like uh, Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Please explain. Well, she really is, you know. I mean, she's the absolute destruction of her supposed beloved husband. And, I mean, you know, it's it's also like, you, do you remember, did you study Othello in school? I, I did, think, I did, yeah, yeah. and at well, university, yeah. It's again like, you know, she's like Iago dripping poison in Othello's air, <laughs> setting him up to destroy Desdemona. I mean, she is a piece of work, as several people told me, to whom I spoke in Hollywood, who have known her forever, she is a very, very destructive personality. And I say that with great regret, because I'm Jamaican, 
and I know the tremendous hope that people all over the world vested in Meghan being a success. But everybody could see yeah, the opportunity. I agree with you. Except Megan. She couldn't see. She yeah. could only see, you know, I want to go to California and I want to live the life of a billionaire and to hell with everybody else. I mean, I just think what a waste of an opportunity, you know. I mean, this woman was given the choicest position on earth, if you stop to think of it. You know, she had the most extraordinary opportunity and she just threw it in everybody's face. And I really object very violently to Meghan trying to make out that the British people are classist and colour prejudiced. And racist, yeah. And, I mean, unbelievable. It's, I, all, it's all so unjust. I agree. I agree with you, Lady Campbell, uh, because uh, uh, I think that's what a lot of people in Britain uh, think. Uh, just before you go, uh, because of you, you know we've been talking about your book, remind me what it's called. It's called Meghan and Harry, and notice it's Meghan first. Meghan and Harry: The Real Story. The real story. And it's about it's about this woman who is dominating and very ambitious, and she finds herself a really nice sweet, obliging, weak guy who she seduces <laughs> and thereafter right. she has his eyes spinning and and the lower head into operation 24-7 yep. and I mean it's, 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 it's a real tragedy. Well, she's, she's, a, she's a Lady Macbeth. Uh, we don't like Lady Macbeth but we do like Lady C's. Uh, Lady Colin Campbell, thank you so much. Uh, come back and speak to us soon. Always a pleasure. That's the great Lady C.